by the tremendous God we serve today. I am amazed by Him. I am so amazed by the Lord. As we begin the sermon today, I want to ask you if you would stand with me for just a moment. And let us ask God together. If you can't stand, it's okay, you can be seated, but if you can stand, stand. And let us ask God together to speak to our hearts and our minds. Because we need a visitation from the Lord this morning. America is headed in the wrong direction. And the church is starting to follow. We have a generation that is going along to get along accepting the culture of the day in the church and allowing it to dictate many of the decisions that is made governing the church. I am not advocating this morning that we become monks and take on some super strict religious teaching, but simply that we turn our hearts and our minds back to the Bible and allow it to govern the decisions made in and by the church in these last days before Christ's return. I am speaking to this church, New Horizons. Let us put before us the Bible as our standard of living and holiness. That we might do our part in raising the next generation to serve and to honor our God. Can we do that together this morning as a church? Can we say that prayer and ask our God that He would do that to us today and that He would would begin to so affect our hearts that we will never be the the same. We need God to affect our hearts in a fashion that will leave us absolutely changed, that will touch every fiber of our being, that will go to the depths of our heart and our soul and our mind and our spirit. And if you are raising children, that it would put something on the inside of you that would raise up and that you would have a strong desire to impart into your children the grace that is in the Lord God Almighty, that you would implant in them the strength that is found in the Bible, that you would implant in them the importance of reading and studying the Word of God. Can we do that as a church this morning? Father God, I come before you today and I ask you that you would hear our prayers this morning concerning the next generation and concerning us. Father God, I pray today that you would touch us in such a fashion. My God, that you would touch us and anoint us in such a fashion that we would be such godly parents and grandparents. Lord, that we would speak into the lives of our children and our grandchildren. Lord, that we would speak into the lives of the children of this local church and we would be Begin to tell them and to speak to them the graces of the living God, that we would stress the importance of the Bible and serving God to all generations, and God, that a new generation might rise up that honors you and serves you. Father God, not one that's commonplace, that's complacent, but one that serves you and honors you today. God, we ask it in Jesus' name and for Jesus' sake, give the Lord a hand clap before you're seated this morning. Today is Memorial Day, and it is about remembering the sacrifice of men and women who have given so greatly for the freedom of this nation. I read a bumper sticker that said this, All gave some and some gave all. Never forget. Freedom has a price, and many of us in this room are enjoying the cost that was paid for us without paying it ourselves. Today we gather to remember the fallen, those who have served and those that have given so much. Today we salute these great men and women for their sacrifice. And I do appreciate that so much. 
Our young men and women are volunteering to serve because they love this great nation. And let us never forget the sacrifice that they lay on the altar of freedom. We should never forget the God who made America. The great nation she is today, our history is rich and alive with the hand of God at work in our nation. And today we're going to go down history lane for just a little while, but then I will bring it back to the Word of God. History's highways are filled with the wreckage of nations that have forgotten God. Did you know that? There are the highways of history are filled with the nations that have forgotten who God is. Psalm 78, 11 through 16. And forgot his works and his wonders that he had shown them. Marvelous things he did in the sight of their fathers in the land of Egypt and in the, in the field of Zone. He divided the sea and caused them to pass through. And he made the waters to stand up like a heap. In the daytime also he led them by a cloud and at night by a light of fire. He split the rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink in abundance like the depths. He also brought streams out of a rock and caused waters to run down like rivers. Psalm 78, 41 through 42. Yes, again and again they tempted God and limited the, the Holy One of Israel. They did not remember His power. The day when he, the re, when he redeemed them from the enemy. And I'm afraid we have forgotten to remember the power that's in the living God who has redeemed us from the enemy. I think it's time that we begin to remember the great God of heaven who has done so great for many things for us. I think it's time that we remember that we are living in a land that is absolutely free. And a lot of the freedoms that we enjoy is simply by a sovereign hand of God. Because when some, our forefathers came to this nation, they came with a purpose. And that was to find religious freedom and to serve God. But it is beyond me to believe that how we're going in the reverse where that we can take prayer and Bible reading out of our schools and replace it with something else President George Washington said it is impossible to govern the world without God and the Bible of all the dispositions and habits that led to political prosperity our religion and morality are indispensable supporters in 1782, the U.S. Congress voted in favor of a resolution recommending and approving the Bible for use in our schools. But on June 25, 1962, the United States Supreme Court decided in Engel v. Vitale that a prayer approved for the New York Board of Regents for the use in schools violated the First Amendment by, con by constituting an establishment of religion. The following year, in, in Abbott and School v. Symptom, the court disallowed Bible reading in public schools for similar reasons. These two landmark Supreme Court decisions centered on the place of religion in public education and particularly the place of Protestant, which has long been accepted as a given American faith or tradition. Both decisions ultimately changed the face of America's society and in turn helped to usher in the last half century of cultural wars that we're dealing with. We had God in school and we took God in the Bible out of school. When we had God in school, the worst thing you had was chewing gum in a fist fight. Now that we've taken God out of the school, we have all kinds of ungodly things. And that's simply because we have failed to remember the God of our youth. We have failed to remember the God who, is, who has brought us thus far. And if we don't get back to remembering who he is and begin to instruct our children and our churches in the grace and the love of the living God, we can go down the road of the other nations and just become one of them if we forget the great God of heaven. We cannot afford to forget the God who has sustained us and brought us thus far. We need to remember that it is God's sovereign hand that has supported us and guided us and governed us. And when we forget that, we are on the brink of losing our identity as a, as a, a religious or a Christian nation. And I don't know about you, I don't want to lose myself in what's going on in the world today. And perhaps when we look around in this land of plenty and because we have so much and because so much is afforded to us, we sometimes forget that all of these benefits are put on us by a living and a God that has helped us because of our serving Him. We have forgotten who He is. Patrick Henry, first governor of Virginia and member of the Constitutional 
Continental Congress stated, It cannot be emphasized too strongly or too often that this great nation was founded not by religiosity, but by Christians. Regardless of what they're telling us in our classroom, this nation, this nation was founded by Christian men and Christian women who left their home in search and pursuit of a place that they could honor and serve their living God without persecution. But today, we have lost some of those freedoms. I wonder today in this room how many of you have recognized, and don't just raise your hand because everybody else does, but how many of you in your life have recognized we have lost some of our freedoms? I have recognized the fact that we have lost some of our freedoms to praise God. But did you know that God is raising up a generation of young people that say that, that reading the Bible in public is still something they like to do? That they feel comforted by the Bible. I didn't know this, but when I was doing some research, I discovered that a lot of teenagers read the Bible for a minimum of 15 minutes a day. That ought to tell us what is going on. That ought to tell us that the generation that is coming is seeking a presence of a living God. They're seeking a presence of something that is better than what they have. They are in search of a God that can transform their lives and give them more fulfillment in, in the life that they're living. They want something that helps them that changes them that speaks to them they don't want dead religion and I'm telling you you can only watch and play so many crazy video games that amount to nothing and it not make you sick to your stomach I believe that God before this time is over is going to raise up a generation of young people that are going to serve God that are going to praise God and that are going to usher in a revival like we've never seen before in the history of this nation we need a great revival in these last days if not what are we going to do we need a great move of a living God. We need Him to touch us and to strengthen us. I want to read some just history to you in just a for just a moment. God has blessed America. How many know that? God has blessed America. I'm so thankful that I live here. American history. In American history, there are many stories of God's miraculous intervention. But most history books written by humanists who deliberately keep true facts out of textbooks you won't read what i'm going to read to you from a school book you've got to go to the you got to go to history and find this an illustration british commander william ho was moving 30,000 veteran british troops to take new york general george washington had only 18 18,000 inexperienced troops it was the year 1776 British troops, or excuse me, 1776. British troops outflanked Washington. Washington lost 1,000 men and two top generals. Washington's troops were discouraged without any reason. The British halted their troop movement for no apparent reason. Had they kept on pressing in, they would have destroyed Washington and the troops. They would have destroyed everybody. Yet they still were trapped on Long Island only the only route of, of escape was a treacherous East River, which was in the wintertime, and the weather was bad, and it was at a it, storm was happening. Washington called for a prayer meeting to ask God for guidance and help. After that, he decided to cross the river. It was storming, and then suddenly at 11 p.m., the wind died and the rain stopped. R the river was as smooth as glass. He started crossing, and a gentle, gentle breeze came up from behind them and pushed him along. Even with this miracle, still it would be impossible to get all the troops across to Manhattan Island before daybreak. Just as it began to, the day began to break, a thick fog draped over all of them, hiding them from the British troops. When the fog lifted, the British commander Howe was shocked. Washington's troops had escaped. Washington and his men recognized God's blessings on America. I wonder today if we can read this in our history books and recognize this great God that we serve and how he has sovereignly helped our nation. When you fail to remember the great hand of God on you, you limit God's hand to work for you and to work with you. Israel forgot God and God sold them. America must never forget our God. 
There are some things that we need to remember, and I want to talk about some of those things that we need to remember. Not as a nation now, but as an individual, we need to remember these things. We need to remember the pit that was ours prior to salvation. Psalms 40 and 2. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit. This is what God did for you. He brought you up out of a horrible pit and out of the miry clay. We sing a song about that, but we don't know that that's where we were. We were in a horrible pit, and he brought us up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and he set my feet up on a rock and established my steps. When you were lost and undone and had no hope from within, it was the Lord Jesus Christ who brought you out of the horrible pit, who put, he brought you up out of the clay. It was him who established your foot and brought salvation and brought freedom and brought hope. It was the God that we served that gave you sustaining life. It was not you yourself. It was the God of heaven that reached down in a pit where you were, where you had made your bed, and he lifted you up. And church, we need to never forget the pit that we came out of we need to be thankful for the salvation that God has given us we should remember the place we were after salvation you know sometimes after we get saved we go to a place and we need to be changed Revelations 2 4 and 5 nevertheless I have this against you this is Jesus speaking to the seven churches We need to remember where we are sometimes after salvation. We need to remember how sometimes we we begin to fall back on our relationship with God. We need to remember that at times all of us fail to, to serve God with a fervent spirit. But this scripture says that Jesus has something against us. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Do you love him today like you did when you first started serving him? Can I tell you, if you've been serving God more than, more than a week, you ought to be getting stronger in your love for Him or to be developing. And after you've served God for 10 years and 15 years and 20 years, you ought to have a strong, deep devotion for the Lord God Almighty. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do your first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. God tells us that we need to repent. Jesus said, remember, repent, and return. When a person falls, you know they don't fall up. They always fall down. You don't fall up. Wouldn't it be nice if you fell up, but you don't fall up. You fall down. We should remember our vows and our commitments. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 4 and 5. When you make a vow to God, do not delay to pay it, for he has no pleasure in fools. Pay what you have vowed. Better not to vow than to vow and not pay. A vow is a promise. When you make a promise to God, God, I promise to serve you. Let me tell you something. When you make those kind of commitments to God, when you promise God that you will serve Him, when you in your heyday, in your time when you're serving God and everything is going right in your life and you just feel like, oh, I just want to tell the Lord, I want to make a promise to Him and I'm going to stick with that promise. When you make that promise, no matter what happens, you need to stick to that promise. I don't forget the promise that I made to God it wasn't contingent upon me to make this promise to God when he, when he saved me. But I'll never forget the words that I said to him 43 years ago. I will never, Sue, I will never forget those words. These are the exact words I said to the Lord. I said, God, if you will save me, I will do anything you ask me to do. Because I was in such a desperate place to know him. And when he forgave my sins, I tell you, it was like the weight of the world lifted off me. And as long as there's breath in my body, as long as I have a right mind to declare the gospel, as long as I have the ability to speak to anybody, anywhere, anytime about Jesus Christ, I want to be able to do that. When we were over at the, uh, at the, uh, in Kennewick in the revival, we stayed in a hotel, and as one morning we got up and 
yeah, it was one morning we were getting ready to go to church, and we had went down and ate breakfast, and had went or Sunday morning had went back to the uh, was going back to the room, and there was a family sitting in the lobby and as we walked by them the Holy Spirit spoke to me and so we kept walking down the hallway a little bit and I stopped and I told my wife I got to go back and talk to these people so I went back and just went up and introduced myself to them and and God gave me an opportunity to pray for that family I have no idea what they needed I don't know anything about them but what I do know is that when the Holy Spirit prompts us I made a vow to God if you touch me and you save me whenever you speak to my heart I'm going to be mindful of what you said to me and I want to go do that we need to remember the vows and the commitments that we make to God I committed to pastor I committed to preach I committed to do all I can to tell the story of Jesus Christ and when we make those promises we need to fulfill those promises let me tell you something when we don't fulfill our promises do you think God lets that promise go idle he's going to require that of you And some of us, sometimes we live lives that are really struggling simply because we know that God has gifted us, God has given us talent, God has given us ability, and we fail to do that because of you fill in the blank. We need to remember those vows that we make to Him. Some of the vows that we may have made is to teach a Sunday school class, to witness, to live a holy life. To answer his calling in our lives. We need to remember our vows to our spouse. To our companion. To love, to honor, to cherish, to keep self for the other person. We need to remember our brothers and sisters. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 3. I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience as my forefathers did. As without ceasing I remember you. In my prayers night and day, we need to remember our brothers and sisters in the Lord. We are to remember the truths of God. John chapter 14, verse 26. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said unto you. Revelation chapter 3, 3. Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard and hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. We need to remember all of those things. We need to remember our parents. Ephesians 6, 1 says, Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Psalm 71 and 9 says, Cast me not off in the time of old age. Forsake me not in, when my strength faileth. We need to remember God in all of these things. We need to remember the Lord. We need to remember our time with Him. We need to remember the talent that He gave us. We need to remember the treasure, the job that He provided for you to make a living. We we need to remember in our thoughts, we need to remember Him. We need to remember His goodness and His mercy all the days of our life. And we need to remember His commandments. If you love me, You will keep my commandments. I want to share one last verse in Judges chapter 2 verse 10. When all the generation had been gathered to their fathers, another generation arose after them who did not know the Lord, nor the work which he had done for Israel. The story here, the back story is there arose another generation which did not know God. The new generation drifted away from the righteousness of their fathers and departed from their personal relationship with the Lord. That led to their conformity to the lifestyles and values of the surrounding culture. And as a result, they forgot God. Then they lost their freedom. They found only oppression and bondage. And verse 13 says, they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtoreth. Here's who Baal was. Baal was the god of fertility, weather, rain, wind, lightning, and seasons. Ashtoreth, in demonology, is the the great duke of hell. They stopped serving God and started serving that. We can never forget our loving God. We can never forget to call on the name of the Lord. Would you come give me some music? We cannot forget God. When we forget God, we go into a dark hole that we can't get out of. 
Memorial Day is a time of remembering our troops that have fallen. But it's also a time for us to reflect and to remember who we are and to remember the great God that has given us so very much. I want to remember God with everything that's in me. I want to remember who he is. I want my relationship with the Lord to be as fresh today as it was on the first day that I accepted him. I want to feel those giddy feelings in my heart that I felt when Christ forgave me and came into my heart and washed my sins away. Now, I don't know all of your life in this room today, but if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior this morning and you'd like to invite him into your heart and into your life to change you, if you'd like to invite him to forgive your sins and to wash away your sins, if you want to invite him to change your life, if you just put your hand up, anybody in this room today, if there's anybody in this room standing here with me this morning, that you can take an inventory of your life and you can say with, that I have forgotten to put God first at times. Amen. I have forgotten to make God the most important part of my daily life. First thing in the morning, I honor Him by talking with Him. Sometimes we get up in such a hurry to go to work. Get up a little before time to go to work. Don't, give up, don't get up 30 minutes before time to go to work when you got 20 miles to drive. You'll have no time for God. Somebody said, I like to sleep. I do too. I prefer to sleep about seven hours a night, but I don't always get to do that. What I do need more than anything else is I need my relationship with the Lord. I need to keep it renewed. I need to keep it alive and I need to keep it well. I don't want to forget him. Can we pray this morning, church? Father, we just come before you this day and we just give you praise. We give you honor in this place this morning. We thank you, Lord, for remembering us and we want to remember you. Lord, I'm thankful that there's no morning that I get up and there's no oxygen for me to breathe. Thank you for remembering that. Lord, I thank you in the morning when I get up that there's gravity that holds me on this earth. Lord, I thank you that there's rain to grow the, the crops that we need to eat. That there's sunshine to warm them that they will grow. I thank you that there's seasons that come. I thank you for the daily benefits that you load me down with. I remember all of your goodness to me today. I remember everything that you've done to speak to my heart and my life and my soul. God, I remember. I remember, God. I remember. And Father, I pray that you would hear my prayers tonight or this morning as I call on your name. Hear my prayers, mighty God, and answer me. Don't turn away from me, Lord, but incline your ear to hear me. Listen to me, Lord, as I call on your name. Help me to become the man of God that you destined me to be. Help me to remember your hand in my life, how you direct me and how you guide me and how you lead me. Help me to remember you, Lord. Help me never to forget you. And God, I'll be careful to praise you today and to give honor to you. Lord, I love you this morning, and I praise you today. And I give honor to your blessed and wonderful name. Lord God Almighty, I love you today, and I thank you today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.